Welcome to the Story Behind Clue series. In every episode of this series, we talk about the history of one of the original weapons used in the game Clue. This series may not be appropriate for all ages, and listener discretion is advised. What can you say about this weapon? While not as useful as the rope or as destructive as the knife, it's definitely a staple in any toolbox. And also the perfect tool for murder. To quote Laffin's Judy Karn, suck it to me. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind The Wrench. But first, a quick message. Are you a fan of podcasts? Of course you are. Why not take the two pods a day challenge all through the month of August by listening to two new podcasts every day? And if you need suggestions, follow the number two pods a day on Twitter or visit two pods a day dot wordpress dot com. And thank you to Josh Hallmark from two pods a day for featuring the story behind as one of the suggestions this month. Listen more. Listen indie. The first wrench, known as the spanner, was invented in 1835 by Solomon Merrick of Springfield, Massachusetts. Basically, for those unfamiliar with these tools, a wrench is used for tightening nuts and bolts. In the way a screwdriver is meant to be put into the top of a screw and turned, a wrench is meant to go on the outside of nuts and bolts and turn to tighten them. The Allen wrench, however, is inserted into the top of a screw and turned, more like a screwdriver. This is also known as a hex key or Allen key, By the way, Allen Wrench or Allen Key is a brand name, like Kleenex or Dumpster, and the company that originally made them, the Allen Manufacturing Company of Hartford, Connecticut, discourages genericizing it. Although whenever I need one, I usually just grab one of the hundreds we have from putting together IKEA furniture. By the way, if you ever want an internet rabbit hole to fall through, look up a guy named Allen Wrench and the conspiracy theory of his involvement in the death of Kurt Cobain. Anyway, the monkey wrench, which has an adjustable head and is the one depicted in the game and movie Clue, was invented in 1858. And even though the name of the wrench is spelled like the animal, the inventor's name, Charles Monkey, was spelled M-O-N-C-K-Y. But as I dug a little deeper, it turns out Charles Monkey may not even have existed at all. But more on that in a bit. If you looked at a monkey wrench and a pipe wrench, you wouldn't notice much of a difference, since both have adjustable heads on them. The main distinction can be found when looking at the jaws. The monkey wrench is flat, while the pipe wrench has a jagged edge which is more versatile. The pipe wrench is also known as a Stilson wrench, named after its inventor Daniel Stilson, who worked for the Walworth Company. When he bought his steel wrench to the Walworth chief engineer named Colonel Levi R. Green in 1865, Green challenged Stilson to test it on a quarter-inch pipe. Either twist off the pipe or break the wrench. Put enough strength in the wrench to do one thing or the other. And as an aside, is Colonel Green not an awesome name to find when researching a Clue series? Colonel Green would recount the story to future employees, saying, Half an hour later, Dan came back with a piece of pipe which had been twisted off. His wrench was intact. You might have heard the rumor that the monkey wrench was given the name as a racial slur toward black heavyweight champion boxer Jack Johnson, who supposedly invented it. Jack Johnson was not only known for his legendary boxing achievements of winning 79 out of 113 fights, 44 by knockout, he was also known for his personal life. It was seen as infuriating that a black man in the early 1900s would be able to best some of the best white fighters at the time, and James Jeffries, known as the Great White Hope, came out of retirement just to challenge Johnson. But Jeffrey's loss that followed added to the already slowly growing white-on-black violence in America. Racial tensions between whites and Jack Johnson were exacerbated even more because he fraternized with white women, landing him in prison for a year for taking his future wife, who happened to be white, across state lines. While in prison, Johnson began making adjustments to the monkey wrench, which had already been invented years before he patented his adjustments in 1922. The false origin story of the derogatory meaning behind the name began circulating the internet around 2015, according to Snopes. Jack Johnson's adjustments to the wrench wasn't the only patent he took out. He also invented a, quote, theft-preventing device for vehicles, 
which would block the fuel supply if an unauthorized person tried to steal the car. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of the other guests? You don't need any help from me, sir. That's right. Colonel Mustard, portrayed by Martin Mull in the movie, was given the wrench by Mr. Body in the beginning and used it to kill the stranded motorist in the lounge. He was being blackmailed for not only visiting Miss Scarlet's um, business establishment, but also for selling Air Force radio equipment during the war on the black market. So here's the thing about the black market. It's hard to research. <laughs> In fact, part of my Google history now includes wondering how to sell military parts on the black market. So if nothing else, this episode probably put me on the government's watch list. However, during World War II rationing, the black market wasn't difficult to find. And the most sought after items in the United States and one of the easiest to obtain was meat. Butchers were able to create a nice side hustle for themselves if people were willing to pay. Give me a nice small sirloin about that thick. That thick? You heard me. That thick. Well, madam, we're here to serve you, but that'd run about three pounds. Are you having enough ration stamps for that? Maybe I can fix you up after all, but it cost you 80 cents a pound. 80 cents? That's ridiculous. That's just what I keep saying. Wonder the government wouldn't do something about it. All this talk about price ceilings. Well, do we take it or do we leave it? Oh, I'll take it. I guess you have to pay to get what you want these days. That's right. So while Colonel Mustard may have not gotten his money from his inheritance, as he originally stated in the movie before his backstory was revealed, he may not have had to go to all the trouble and sabotage his own men for some money if he could have just gotten some hands on some random cows instead. You lure men to their deaths like a spider with flies. Flies are where men are most vulnerable. Right. The Clue series butler you heard at the beginning of the episode was played by Paul from Rick and Paul Heal the World. Colonel Mustard imitations provided by Chris, Emily, Kendall, and Michael from Redemption, a Star Wars actual play podcast. The role of Colonel Green was played by David, the producer from The Unwritable Rant. If you'd like to add your voice to the podcast, join the Story Behind discussion group on Facebook to be notified when I'm looking for guest voices for the show. And this is different from the Story Behind Facebook page. Information for this episode was sourced from the Black History Channel, ushistory.com, ThoughtCo, and more links which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. This episode was brought to you by the Story Behind executive producers, who support the show through the Patreon page. Stargate Pioneer, Matt from the One Word Go Show, Sam Dunn, and newest executive producer, History Goes Bump. Thanks for listening. <laughs>